Hello and welcome back to another Cookie Take video. And today I'm going to be teaching you on a brand new feature called the Audio API, which personally I think revolutionizes the way that audio works inside of your Roblox games. So this tutorial may be a little bit complicated because it introduces a ton of new theories. Although if you stick along, follow the chapters that can be found in your timeline down below, I think you'll be able to get through it just fine. So <laughs> this did take me like two hours to create, so a like or a subscription would be highly appreciated. It's free and I would highly appreciate it. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy it. So first of all, I'm just going to show you how the new audio system works. So this new system allows you to have essentially an audio player that can play out to different places inside of the 3D world, like audio emitters. It also allows you to have walkie-talkies, so the ability to communicate with teammates, effects, um, spectrograms, which are like those cool little uh, 2D, 2D pictures of um, audio. I'll put a picture up right now. And it just introduces a ton of new abilities into the Roblox workspace. So first of all, let's just have a quick look at the audio player and audio emitter. Now I'd recommend remembering this, we call these wires, and this is really helpful for explaining the concept. So as you can see, we have our audio player here, and it's going through a wire to our audio emitter. So let's just turn on our audio player, and you can see our audio emitter is playing some wonderful classical music. <laughs> my favorite. Now we can also stop the audio player and it will stop the sound coming out of the audio emitter. Now keep in mind we are not restricted to one audio emitter. We could have multiple audio emitters in different rotations, orientations and positions. Now let's carry on and I did mention we're not going to be using the spectrogram today or the audio analyzer as it's called and the reason for this is right now this feature still is in beta so it is a little bit buggy but what you need to do is just wait for Roblox to fix that and I'll probably make a video update on this in the future and now another cool feature about this update is the ability to modify the audio signal so once again Roblox has really made this as if it were a real life event and you were starting your audio in an audio player, it were to go over to, for example, an effects uh, board and then go into the audio emitter. So let's say we were to start our audio at the audio player. The signal will be passed into the effects board and then it will come out of the speaker. But here's where it gets extra fun. Let's activate the pitch shift as an example on our effects board. You can notice it gets higher. If we go and disable it again, we can enable reverb. Um, the effect might not be noticeable. Then we have EQ. That makes it sound a little bit more tinny. I'll just let you listen. And then we also have distortion, which is my favorite. <laughs> Lovely. And then we can obviously stop it up here. And of course, you do get the idea that it's 3D, you do have the surround sound, as you'd call it. And here is what I would consider one of the coolest features of this update. So I just need to quickly head over to a Roblox game so I can show you this. Okay, and here I am inside of the Roblox game. I'm going to race to the other side. Um, the reason I said I have to be in the Roblox game is so that I'm using the Roblox player, which gives me an access to a very cool feature, which is Roblox voice chat. And here is where this gets super duper cool. So this feature could be used for so many different things, like perhaps a theater inside of Roblox, a PA system, team communications, walkie talkies, but let's have a quick look at this. So I'm going to unmute my mic and you're going to notice, let me just pick up the walkie talkie here. You may hear a bit of an echo because it's going to be played out, but here it is. Hello? Hello? There you there go. You so there's so an effect on this. That <laughs> sounds so, <laughs> so funny. funny. Um, um, but, but. <laughs> okay, I need to mute myself, otherwise I can't hear myself think. But as you can see, I can speak through the walkie-talkie. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. And it's going to get past the other walkie-talkie. Now, there is a couple of effects, that's why it's sounding a bit funky. But I think it's so cool that you can now use the voice chat feature to 
have multiple places in the 3D world where the output from the voice chat is coming. So this gives you so many opportunities. Like, imagine in Roblox Got Talent, there was a PA system, people could do singing. I think this really opens up, and I think the audio API update is really one of my personal favorite updates. So now that's n enough blubber out of the way, let's head over to a brand new Roblox Studio place. Okay, so here we are inside of Roblox Studio, and the first initial thing we need to do is set up the audio API feature and enable it as a beta feature. Now the reason it has to be enabled is because it's still a beta feature. It's not 100% ready, of course if you want to use it in production, I have seen Roblox saying you should test it before you do it, but let's just quickly enable this beta feature. So we're going to click on File, Beta Features, and then we need to scroll down until we find new audio API. You may want to make this window bigger. And then what you need to do is make sure it's enabled, click save. And if it offers to restart, make sure you click restart because the effects will not apply if you don't press restart. Now, next of all, we need to head over to the voice chat service, which we can't see at the moment. So we just have to head over to model, then service, voice chat service, and insert this. And then just make sure that Use Audio API is enabled. And now we're ready to start introducing some of those first initial concepts. So if we head over to our browser, you're going to notice we have so many new instances. As you can see, they are all here. So let's start with the first new theory, which is Wire. The Wire connects one or more instances to form a processing graph of their streams. Each wire connects a source and a target instance, and a source and target pin within each of those instances. Pins are string identifiers that select which stream is to be carried by the wire. At the moment, only audio streams are supported, but this may expand in the future, and the following instances may be connected by wires, blah 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 blah. There's a connected boolean to confirm whether the wire is carrying a stream of data, the source instance, the source name, target instance, blah blah blah. And that's the first theory we need to get out of the way. Now the next one is the audio player. And the audio player is used to play audio assets. It provides a single output pin which can be connected to other pins via wires. Now what I found really helpful was kind of representing this as a real life problem. Like let's imagine I had the audio player and I had to wire it up into the speaker. How would I do it? This is kind of how we're going to do it inside of Roblox. And I really like the approach Roblox has taken to make this seem as if it were to be inside of real life. Now another theory we need to wrap our heads around are audio listeners. So an audio listener records an audio stream from its surrounding audio emitters in the 3D world. It then provides a single output pin which can be connected to other pins via wires. Now at the moment audio emitters spit into the void and unless there is an audio listener listening for the audio emitters, these audio emitters will not be picked up. So it's super important that we use the audio listener. And then finally, I did say finally last time, we have to look at the audio device output. And the audio device output accepts audio streams to be rendered out to physical hardware. So in simple words, if we connect a source up into that, it's going to make sure the noise comes out of our speakers or out of our headphones or out of whichever audio medium we have. So now that we've got these simple concepts around our head, or maybe not so simple depending how you can see them, let's get started by creating our first simple project, which is going to be a speaker system that plays an audio track. So let's head back over to Roblox Studio where we'll get started. Now from past experience, i found that making everything folderized and nice and tidy is super important. So we're going to create a folder inside of Workspace, and let's just call this Audio Stuff. Okay, blatant and clear name, but we just want it to be audio stuff, okay? Of course, we could give it a more specific name, like speaker set. So let's do that. And then from here, we're going to insert two speakers, okay? Now, keep in mind, you're not restricted. You can have as many speakers as you want. However, to keep it simple and clear, I'm going to have two speakers. I might even make it one speaker in the future, just so that we can understand it better. So we're going to create a part, and let's call this speaker A. Okay, speaker A. Um, the names don't really matter. Once again, they're just for organization. And then I'm going to make it black, just so like it's a speaker. And then I'm going to make it a nice cube. And then I'm going to place it here. And then I'm going to create another one in a different location. 
and call it speaker B. Now, the super cool thing about these speakers is when you're playing, you do feel like it's in a 3D area. You do understand where the audio is coming from. So you can really create some cool immersive scenes with this. Next, we're going to create audio emitters inside of our speaker sets. And if we have a look at the documentation here, you can see an audio emitter emits audio streams into the world. It provides a single input pin that can be connected by one or more wires, and any streams wired to an audio emitter get broadcasted into the world from the emitter's parent position. If the parent is an attachment, camera, or PV instance, the parent's world position will be used. If, if the parent is not one of these classes, the audio emitter is effectively silent. And you remember how we use the audio listener to listen out for these audio emitters. So it's all starting to connect and make sense. So let's head back over to Roblox. We're going to create an audio emitter under each of these speakers. So each of these speakers are going to have their own audio emitter. So audio emitter for speaker A and an audio emitter for speaker B. Now, the audio emitter is going to emit noise from the position of its parent, which in this case is speaker A and or speaker B. Next, we're going to start preparing our wires. So we're going to click on plus and then wire. And then we're going to put that as a child of speaker A. And then we're going to make another one, a wire, and we're going to make that the child of speaker B. Now, wires can be anywhere inside of the data model, but just for simplicity, I'm going to put it inside of the speaker, just so that we know, hey, this is the wire for speaker B, and hey, this is the wire for speaker A. Next, what we're going to do is create our audio player, and our audio player is responsible for starting the sound, and then, or making the sound. It's kind of like a CD player, right? But once again, if the CD player has no speakers, you need to wire it up to a set of speakers. So let's create the audio player, inside of speaker set, there it is, audio player, and you're going to notice this has a ton more parameters. So you have asset ID, asset load, is playing, looping, all of this stuff. So looping obviously means after the track has ended, it will continue to play, and is playing means it will start playing straight away. So as soon as you join the game, it will start playing. Some people want that, some people don't. And remember, you can always do all of this with coding. So that's what makes this so powerful. Now, the most important thing about this is the asset ID. So there's a couple of ways to get an asset ID, and there's a couple of ways to get sounds. So you can upload your own sound, first of all, or you can find a sound on the toolbox. And let's just go through the simple way of getting a, for example, a, a sound from the toolbox. And what you would do is you'd head over to toolbox, change this to audio, find an audio you want, right click and copy asset ID. But for me, I've already created my own wonderful classical song, and we're going to head back over to our browser. Then we're going to head over to the sound I uploaded. You can obviously look through the Creator Hub 2 by clicking on audio. And then if you found your sound that you like, you just have to open the URL. It might be in the URL bar for you. I'm just using a funny browser here. And then what you need to do is copy the numbers at the end, and this is the asset ID. Now we can head back over to Roblox Studio. And then from here, what we can do is we can insert an asset ID into here. Now, here's the most important thing you do is you put in RBX asset ID colon slash slash before your number. Then you paste in your number and you're ready to rock and roll. But it's so important that you put RBX asset ID before this. Otherwise, you may not hear the sound coming from your audio player. Now what we need to do is we need to wire up our audio emitters to the audio player. So the source instance is going to be the audio player. Think of the audio player producing the sound, just like the CD player. Then we're going to head back over to our other wire, and we're going to set the source instance to audio player. Then we're going to set the target instance, so for the wire inside of speaker B, we want the target instance to be the audio emitter inside of speaker B. And then we can do the same for their respective speakers. So speaker A wire, the target instance will be speaker A audio emitter. And perfect. Now there's a couple more steps we need to take before this works effectively. So first of all, this audio player won't be working as it's not already playing. So we could make it always playing by is playing. But let's say we want code to trigger this to play. We need to create a script inside of here. And then we just need to say script dot parent dot audio player and then colon play. Simple as that, it's going to start the track and it's going to start playing. You're also going to notice here that the time length has propagated with the time 
of the asset ID. So my song is 125 seconds. Sometimes you might need to open this up or play it for the time length to actually fill in. I don't know why it doesn't fill in instantly, but that's up to Roblox. And then here's one crucial step. If you don't do this, it will just be silent. It won't work at all. So <laughs> this took me so unbelievably long to figure it out. But how we're going to solve this is, right now we have our audio emitters. But if you remember at the beginning of the video, we talked about audio listeners. Because audio emitters can't be heard unless there's an audio listener, right? You can't hear without ears. So it's all well and good having speakers. But once again, you can't hear without ears. So using some code, we're going to create a script inside of started UI. Make sure it's a local script, sorry. And we can just call this listener script. And then once we've done that, we can define a listener by saying local listener equals instance.new and then uh, the speech marks, audio listener, and then we're going to say comma, and then workspace.camera. What this line of code effectively does is it creates a variable called listener, and then it creates an instance.new, which is a new instance, which is the same as doing plus and then adding whatever you want, which is audio listener which we can think of our is, and it puts it inside of the workspace.camera, so it's always with us. Then what we can do is say local wire equals instance.new, um, and then we can put wire in here, so that's creating a new instance called wire. Then we can set the parent to be listener, which is the ear effectively, and then we can think as the wire, the ear connecting to the brain, if you want to make it like that, if we want to go super real life. I'm trying to make everything uh, relatable here. And then we can say local out equals instance.new, um, and then audio device output. And you remember the audio device output is going to play the result of whatever it can hear out of the speakers or the headphones or whatever audio medium you're using. And then the parent of that can be the wire, uh, like so, and we can just format that. Then finally, we need to make sure that the wire has the proper values. So we can say a wire dot source instance equals the listener, and then wire dot target instance equals out. And now, if this is all correct, this should be ready to work. So here we go, let's head into the game. Come on, I hope this works. <sighs> Ooh. Yes, perfect. You can see how long it took me to get this working. Um, but there we go. It's sounding great. So you really do get a sense for the audio coming from its different locations. It really does feel like I'm in a 3D workspace and I'm experiencing the sounds for myself. And obviously I can delete one. And I can hear just this. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to experiment with some effects. So there's quite a few effects. If we head back over to the browser, you're going to see we have the audio reverb, the audio pitch shifter, the audio flanger, audio fader, audio equalizer, audio echo, audio distortion. Um, what's the audio device output? Oh, that's uh, we've already had a look at that. Audio device input, no, uh, that's not important. Audio device compressor, which I believe is another effect. The audio analyzer, which we're not going to be covering today. And the audio chorus, which once that loads in, come on, load on up Roblox, I'm going to have to refresh the page. Uh, makes any audio stream, this is once again another effect. So I'm going to try run through all of them and try and explain them the best. Um, we're also going to skip audio reverb because that's quite complicated. You can experiment it, it works the same as all the other effects, it's just quite complicated. So first of all, let's have a look at the audio pitch shifter. So in musical terms, a pitch is the um, tone of the note, so whether it's high or whether it's low. And by using the pitch shifter, we can shift the pitch up and down. So you remember our song, it had like a... It had a middle pitch, so it wasn't too high and it wasn't very low. However, we can use the audio pitch shifter to change the pitch of our song. So let's head back over to Roblox. And once again, we need to kind of think of this as real life hardware and we need to connect it up. So we're going to create an effect inside of our speaker set. And once again, that's going to be the audio pitch shifter. So audio pitch shifter, found it. And then I'm going to click plus and then wire, and then what I'm going to do 
is the source is going to be the audio player. Now, just to make this more simple, I'm going to delete speaker B, so we're just working with one speaker. Although you could have as many speakers. Once again, I'm just making this less complicated. Then, as the wire is connecting to the audio player, the source is the audio player. We want to pass that noise into the audio pitch shifter. So now this sound is going into the audio pitch shifter, and as you can see, inside of our pitch shifter, we have a property called pitch. I'm just going to keep that on one for now, so it hasn't changed. And then finally, we need to change the source inside of our speaker to get the source from the audio pitch shifter, and then the target is going to be the audio emitter. So we kind of have a chain here. The wire connects the audio player to the studio pitch shifter, and then the wire connects the studio pitch shifter to the audio emitter. So now let's experiment with this inside of the game. So let's hop in here, and we're going to load in. And there's also, you can control this all through code. So there's so many ways you can use this. So let's experiment with this pitch shifter. This could get a little bit funky. So let's increase the pitch. <laughs> there you go, it's much higher. <laughs> Funny. And then we can also make it much deeper. There you go. And then we can revert it back to normal. That was fun. So that's the audio pitch shifter out of the way. Let's have a look at the audio flanger. And I believe this one is also going to be quite fun. So we're going to create the audio flanger here. And then we're going to connect the audio player to the audio flanger. And then we're going to do the same for our wire. We're going to connect the source to be the audio flanger and the instance to be the audio emitter. I'm not going to explain that anymore as we have gone over that in the first effect but I'm just going to presume you're going to remember that steps and I'm just going to explain how each individual effect works. So we're going to hop in here and let's see if we can hear the effects of the audio flanger. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, I can hear the audio flanger. Let's see, what can we do here? So a lot of this will be trial and error. What does this do? Yeah, a lot of this is going to be trial and error and seeing how it sounds, so there's a lot of fun to be had here. So that's the audio flanger out of the way. Then we have the audio fader, and this adjusts the volume of the audio stream, because you're going to notice the audio player doesn't actually have a volume setting. That has to be done through the audio fader. So we're going to create the audio fader, wire it up. Once again, I'm not going to explain that, as we now have that done multiple times. Um, and then let's try this out inside of the game. So this should hopefully allow us to customize the volume of the sounds. So here we are in the game. There you go. Let's see if we can now make this louder. So we're going to increase the volume. Oh, yep. Yeah. And it's definitely much louder. Or I can make it much quieter. There you go. Much quieter. Then let's move on to the next effect which is going to be the audio equalizer. Now, equalizers can be a little bit complicated as they have three frequency bands, which gain values can be controlled. So if we head back over here, let's create the audio equalizer. I'm going to hook up the wires again. Once again, I'm not going to explain that. We've already done that so many times. So here we go. Source, audio, alias, wire. Also, the source is going to be here and that should be all good. So let's hop into the game and see how it works. Okay, we're in. Okay, I think I may have wired that incorrectly as I'm hearing nothing. So the wire connects. Ah, that's the mistake. I accidentally changed the wrong thing there. Okay, that's good. And that's good. The best way to explain the audio equalizer to my knowledge is using the properties themselves. So there's high gain, low gain, mid gain, and mid range, okay? Now, uh, in the simplest way I can explain it, you have your high gain, which is your high noises, your low gain, which is your low noises, and your mid gain, which is your medium noises. Now the gain is essentially how loud each of these is. So if we increase the high gain, the high pitches are going to be louder. So let's increase them. And hopefully, you should be able to hear effect, maybe. There you go. It can be quite subtle, and you obviously do want a bit of knowledge on music tech if you're doing that, but once again, you may be able to get the effect you desire using the audio equalizer. Now that is out of the way, let's have a look at the audio echo, and this should be pretty self-explanatory. 
So we're going to create the audio echo here with the plus audio echo. Then we're going to wire this up again. Uh, once again, not going to explain it. If you want to see how it works again, just head back up to the beginning. And hopefully this does what I want it to do. I do love a good echo, but let's see how does it go. Here we are inside. And then... Uh-oh, may have messed up the wiring again. Uh, that's looking good. Okay, that's looking good. Hmm, that's interesting. Ah, that's what I did. It seems I accidentally deleted the audio player. So let's make sure that comes back. And then the audio echo, because obviously without the audio player, we can't hear any noise, which is not very good. So now that that is all connected, let's listen to this audio echo. Okay, so we're going to load up here. Okay, let's see, how does the audio echo work? I honestly have no idea how any of this works. Oh yeah, there we go, we've got an echo. <laughs> okay, that may be better with sounds, not songs. Um, but that was pretty cool. Then the next one we can have a look at, audio distortion. Oh, this is one of my favourites. So, audio distortion, we're going to create just a pre-warning for those that are using headphones. You may want to bump down your volume now, we'll skip ahead to the next chapter. But here we are with the speaker, we're going to head over to the speaker again. And then, let's listen. No, did I mess up my wiring again? What is going on today? Audio player? Yes, audio. Okay. Okay. There we go. Oh, I misconnected another wire. There we go. There we do not go. Uh oh, what is going on here? Roblox is having a bit of a moment. I see what's going on. There we go, I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. Maybe Roblox wasn't having a moment, maybe just me. And then we have a couple more effects and then we can try that cool feature with voice chat. So, brace your ears. <laughs> Lovely. Now let's have a look at the audio compressor, which adjusts the dynamic range of the audio stream, so any momentary burst of loudness will be clamped down according to the compressor's properties. So, for example, like me, when I'm screaming because none of my code is working on the live stream, I use an audio compressor to make sure your guys' poor ears don't get blown out. So let's wire this up correctly. I hope for no mistakes. That's looking good. Uh, there we go. Once again, you may want a bit of knowledge on music tech, um, but I'm going to try my best to make this work. So let's say the threshold is going to be, let's say, minus f uh, 52. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, something like that. But the threshold is essentially which sounds come through and which sounds don't come through. So um, that's good when you have um, audio with... Uh, very uh, with a very high amplitude so audio that has super loud moments and then audio that has super um silent moments so if you want some more consistency or to cut off the super loud noises that's what can be used that also might be great for voice chat i didn't think about that but that may be really good for voice chat it'll stop people from screaming and then the final thing we want to have a look at here, which is the audio chorus, which makes an audio stream more voluminous. It provides one input pin and one output pin, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's try this out. So let's head back. Okay, audio chorus. Come on, final effect. Let's see, can I get my wiring? Okay, so where audio compressor should be audio chorus. This should be audio chorus. Um, there we go. And let's see what this does. I have no idea what this does. And let's see. So we're going to head into the game here. Oh, I think I can hear what it's doing. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the flanger. And that is now all of the effects covered. So let's move on to the final thing I want to show you guys today. So here is the audio device input, and the audio device input produces audio streams from a physical device such as microphones. It provides a single output pin which can be conducted to other pins via wires. So while using the audio device input, we can also run it through effects, although I'm not going to cover all of those effects again. 
It provides a single output pin which can be connected to other pins, we've already covered that. And audio device input has properties for selecting which players is producing the stream and controlling whether or not they are muted. Okay, so I just realized for this to work, it's going to be slightly more complicated than what I anticipated. So uh, make sure enable default voice is disabled. And then we're going to create a new script inside of players. And now I'm just going to copy and paste this in just to keep it simple, but uh, I'm going to explain each line by line, of course. And so essentially how this is going to work is if we head back to our speaker set, which has been reset, we need to click plus, and then what we need to do is in here, we need to create a new um, audio listener, and then we need to wire the source to be the audio listener and the target instance to be the audio emitter. Now what this code is doing is it's saying local players equal game colon get service players and then it's going to say local function connect source instant uh, destination instance local wire equal instance dot new wire comma dst which is the distance or the instance sorry and connect is going to be ran whenever a character is spawned and then we have something called an audio interaction group okay and this is essentially a closed off people so let's just call this party speakers and then inside of our listener we're going to also create the audio interaction group party speakers and this means only people in that group can hear each other so it's obviously a bit complicated then we have the from audio device input uh, so here we're running the connect where it's going to connect it all up and then on the player added this is where it runs it so local input equals instance dot new it creates a new audio device input which is uh, using the microphone and then we're going to say input.player equals player if player.character then on character spawned and then if not then we wait for it to spawn in and then there's players.player added then it runs a for loop um obviously uh, i wouldn't recommend this for beginners to try out although if you're intermediate or maybe you know what you're talking about this could be very cool to experiment with we have the script here and we've named the audio interactive group party speakers and i have two speakers audio listener A and audio listener, so two speakers, they both have the same audio interaction group, which is party speakers, they all have an emitter that is set up for a while, and let's head into the Roblox game, and hopefully this will finally now work. Okay, so here we are in the game, and let's give it a test. Hello? Hello? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I can I'll hear my hear own my voice. voice. Hello? Hello? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. All right. Oh. Well, I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. Um, that's all for me. Once again, this took such a long time to record and to edit. And I appreciate you for watching. If you have any issues with this video, head over to your head over to your favorite browser and head to our new website, which is forms.thecookie.dev. And here, anybody can help you with any questions or with any issues you may have. So just sign up, log in, ask away, and we can help you. That's all from me. Thank you for tuning in, and bye-bye.